present my ideas, but if you have any questions, if I'm going too quickly, if you have anything to ask, even if it's not related to the position, as long as it's related to chess, you know, feel free, don't be shy, that's why I'm here. Put your hands up and, and ask away. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've been a grandmaster since 2003. I played for Costa Rica, my own country, but I now represent America. And I live in St. Louis. I've been the head coach of St. Louis University for the last five years. We're a scholarship-based program that uh, fights with other scholarship programs around the nation, not only for the title of the United States, but this year we won the uh, World Online Women's Championship. So we won the World Champions. Uh, let's, uh, let's do a little bit of a lecture. I wanted to go over some games that impressed me. Uh, that happened very recently. So, who is familiar here that a tournament just happened in St. Louis? Big tournament. Single Cup. The Single Cup happened. Yeah, everybody know about the, about the Single Cup? Yeah. Raise your hand if you've heard of it. Alright, well, most people. Yeah, raise your hand if you've no idea who the Single Cup is. Alright, a couple of people. Uh, the Single Cup is one of the main tournaments in the world. It takes the best of the best and brings them to St. Louis to fight against each other. Usually we get the top 10 players in the world. Pandemic season, you know, not so easy to make tournaments or invite people from abroad. Didn't quite get there, but still it was an extremely strong tournament. And after that, we had a little bit of an exhibition event. We had an event called the Best 9LX Champions Showdown, and that was a Fisher Random Tournament. Now, does anybody know what Fisher Random is? All right. For those that are unfamiliar, Fisher Random Chess is chess. It has the same rules as chess, except the back rank does not start where uh, your pieces in front of you are starting. There are a couple of rules on where the pieces have to start. For example, the bishops have to be in opposite colors to each other. The rooks have to be on opposite ends compared to the king. The king has to be between the rooks. But generally, it's still chess. And yes. And we play Fisher Random on the board. <laughs> it's too hard for me. <laughs> Fisher Random is hard. And the reason Fisher Random is hard is that we already have a very natural way of developing our pieces, right? And it's based on where our pieces start. When Fisher Random gets introduced, even top grandmasters like the ones I'm about to show you, some elements of the game are weird. So this is the first game I wanted to look at. Uh, the white player is Lanier Dominguez, who is an incredible, incredible player. Everybody know Lanier? Lanier Dominguez? A couple people? All right, he's one of America's newest grandmasters. He did transfer to America relatively recently, I would say a year and a half, two years ago. He lives up in St. Louis, and he is one of the top 13 best players in the world. And he's playing against Bobby, Fabiano Carvana, who is, you know, the second best player in the world. He's probably a little bit more famous with this crowd. Um, I thought the lecture was pretty insightful. It offered a different way of looking at things. Um, I particularly liked that he showed that not just looking at a piece being powerful as being the only thing you should look at, also acknowledging that certain pieces may become more powerful and it's worth it to trade for those just for positional advantage. I thought it was really interesting. I mean, I had never really... I think it's interesting to get into a perspective like that and see it from his point of view and thinking about sort of how he evaluates a position and trying to implement that into my own game I thought was really wise. It was a really uh, really good lecture. I mean it was interesting looking at the, the Fisher Random games um, and just kind of seeing how some of the same strategies kind of apply. Really just clear uh, strategic ideas. Um, a lot of the things that he discussed just made a lot of sense. Um, even if they didn't make sense at first, as soon as he explained it, it was like, it seemed obvious. Um, no, it's really cool. I've watched a lot of, uh, a lot of his commentary videos on the St. Louis page and everything like that. And, um, yeah, it's really cool to see him in person. I was very good. I learned a lot. Okay. What about you? The, the lecture was very good. Um, I yeah, it just also uh, the strategic aspects of chess and it helped a lot. Yeah, it's very interesting that they used the bare the bare basics of it, but it's still is such an elaborate and seeing so many more moves ahead than we can really do. But it makes you really 
the Grandmaster aren't thinking on a different level, just thinking more and more about each move. I thought it was really cool. There was lots of cool information, learning about how pieces move and what sort of tactics you can use and how that changes the way that the game's played. You know, I don't know if you felt the same way, but when we were playing him, he uh, put time pressure on us. He did. Like, like we were, he, did. he was going around t playing 28 boards, and he was putting time pressure, because he would be coming so quick, it was hard to calculate everything. So he, at the end, he was going quicker because there's less boards, and at the end, he was just going back and forth between our boards, and we had to move as soon as he got there. He's rated like 27.50. <laughs> we played in the Sicilian. My coach uh, had taught me a lot of Sicilian so then I could e easier defend. It was going really well, but uh, as, like I had already used my two skipping capabilities. So I had to play uh, as soon as he came and I just needed more time. So I just faltered and uh, made mistakes that I knew I shouldn't have made. How'd your game go? Uh, well, I lost. It was Grandmaster. So honestly, I didn't have much of a plan. I kind of just winged it. Um, I It ended in a checkmate. It was... I lost faster than I wanted to, um, but it was a lot of fun. It was fun, it was very strong. It was the, the little Indian girl was, I think, the most impressive. She found, she found a lot. <laughs> so, like, that board, or like the French board, uh, the girls' board. Um, I think those are the ones that like took the most effort. Yeah, but it, it was it was fun. I, I think I don't know though. Another Sicilian was the the Indian girl. Was the Sicilian. Was it? Yeah, yeah. She played this Rosalimo line. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she made it up or she knew it, but she like went down some kind of theoretical path. It, it felt like she was making it up, but but it all works <laughs> out for Black, and I was kind of annoyed. <laughs> I was kind of hoping she would annoy it, or she wouldn't find out. But either it was one or the other, or she stumbled into it. You never know. But she played really well after that too, so I don't think she stumbled into it. Yeah, no, I pretty well expected to lose, but I was nervous about how I was going to lose. <laughs> I was like, I just want to make it as good as possible. Uh, interesting. Um, it was, uh, he, I wasn't sure, you know, whether to expect E4 or D4, but, um, played E4, so I prefer a Scandinavian defense because I just figured that's usually what I play when I want to get just a comfortable position at the opening that's not super theoretical. And the opening went, I think, pretty okay. Um, and I got a position where I actually was up a pawn. Um, it was bishops of opposite color, and he had a lot more activity. So I was basically trying to just consolidate, um, you know, uh, catch up on development, because I ended up a little bit behind development. Um, so basically catch up and kind of trade what pieces I could. And, um, yeah, no, it ended up, it just, he, he got more and more uh, his queen kind of got into my position, and then um, I just had a complete lapse, and there was a there was a pawn that I just left hanging, and it was the base of my entire structure. And so after that, he just, all of his pieces were working together, and there was just absolutely no way for me to come back from it. So, you know, not the most ideal way to lose, but uh, you know, it was okay for about 20, 25 moves. <laughs> Well, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, there was a really good crowd, 28 games. He won all 28, so <laughs> me and Jared were the last ones standing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. pretty good game. My, my game was a Carol Kahn, and it, he had all kinds of threats early in the very active pieces, and at the end of the game, ended up being a rook end game, but he had a better pawn structure, so he ended up just um, pushing his advantage, and ended up I couldn't defend it. But it was it was it was fun. I watched him torture Brian beside me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Did he? Like he had win the rook or checkmate at the end. Mm -hmm. It was pretty tough. Yeah. And my game was right down to the last move where I made a mistake. <laughs> As yeah. always. <laughs> I think Jared had the best chance of anybody to either win or draw his game. It, right at the end, it was it, it looked very interesting. It was it was actually really tactical, and that's that was to his advantage because he used to playing you know faster time controls and all that. <laughs> Has the years of experience and is a GM. So. It looked like he brought his, <laughs> his queen back to like uh, uh, F1, and he was going to bring it over to A1, and there were some tactics there. Right, and that's why that's why he recommended. Uh, basically, I sack my rook temporarily and try and fork it back with some checks. But uh, I just overlooked the easy response after he dodges that. I played some modern Benoni, but I forgot all the theory, of course, as soon as I sat down for the game. And then I messed up. And then he sacrificed a queen for a rogue bishop. And he had a past H pawn that was one square from queening in the whole game. And then I couldn't blockade it anymore. And I lost. Okay. What about your game? Um, so I played the Karakhan and he played the two knights variation and he castled long and I won a pawn quickly and then he sacrificed the exchange. So, uh, but my pieces were very inactive. Like for example, my bishop was like locked away and uh, he started an attack and yeah, and then he sacrificed the bishop and, and won. <laughs> Did you guys feel um, more stress or less stress since he's a grandmaster? Well, I have nothing to lose, and I'll actually learn things, so I'll gain something. So, but yeah. No, I noticed in our game, there was one moment where he had a win, just outright win a piece, and he didn't go for it. He went for the positional move instead. So I should have been lost there, <laughs> in all honesty. <laughs> but he was like, no, we'll play this position. It's not yeah. messy. The other way was kind of messy. Did, so. did you notice whenever you looked around, he had great pieces on every board? Yeah. He, had, he was a very uh, strong positional player. No, my, my game, my pieces were backed up. I was defending up seven. I was, I was very much in a defensive crouch. <laughs> Everybody was. Yeah. yeah. I've had some experience playing title players I, um, in St. Louis, and uh, it's kind of like seeing a Slow motion train wreck. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that game was hard. <laughs> that game was really hard. I was going to win at some point. <laughs> what was the game? Was it? What was the opening and everything? Uh, it was a knight or It was a knight. It was a knight or with h4. It was a knight or with h4. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a line. I just don't remember it very well. Yeah. What's your rating? My rating? USF or? I uh, blitz. Chess.com. My chance is like 2,900. 2,900. You know what's funny is that there's 28 people in the room, and I figured I'd have lots of time because you'd be walking around, but I felt under time pressure right from the beginning. Yeah, I think people don't realize I felt that. on yeah. my board. Yeah, especially right. when people start getting eliminated. The, yeah. I think this, the sign was particularly hard because there was no, there wasn't like any super easy like made in 10 moves type of games. There were like everybody lasted. Uh, I would say at least 15, 20 minutes. So. so what percentage of the of the games did you win, like material, like pieces? <laughs> uh, all of them I mean, I think on all of them, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, some of them just came later than others. Right. Um, I mean, I, I think like most games I was pretty sure I was going to win early on, but there were a few that I still had like doubts that this might this might still go wrong. I was surprised by that quick attack you had on Brian sitting beside me. He played the French and you were just, you were just going half. Ah, that yeah. French. Yeah, that French is actually really annoying. I, I messed that up also. Yeah, that game I was a little concerned about that he misplayed it and allowed. Mm -hmm. he, he dropped a, not, not just one point, he dropped a couple of points unnecessarily. Kind of was all over after that. But yeah, that, that line of the French is really annoying, especially in a side one. Can't get to the king either. One thing you did that was really interesting is I would have like a complex a combination on the board and you just walk by and move. Mm -hmm. how, how much did, of each game did you keep in your head and you're walking around? Like I think I was I felt I felt for sure that you were that you remembered the the moves. Yeah, it's 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 not hard. I mean, I, 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 games. 
Yeah, I would definitely, like if somebody moved a piece, I would definitely notice it. Um, yeah, I, 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 you, you especially put attention to like games that are still interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of games where, okay, it's, at this point it's so easy, I'll just figure it out yeah. every round and I don't really remember it at all. Because you're already up so much material or something. And then you get careless because, okay, you're st you stop thinking. So you focus on the games that are still, let's say, complex. And then, mm -hmm. right. and then you, you're usually a little more focused on those, on those turns when you go around. So everything else, I was either like doing do you, well do or just to see, Do you prefer to see just like a standard opening, or do you prefer to see people going blah? <laughs> well, I mean, you, you. I like the challenge. So like, once they play a standard opening, you kind of know that they know how to play, and at least the game will be interesting. Right. Because sometimes, okay, they play like e4, h5, and then you realize, okay, this game is going to end soon. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> But, H4 is a solid move. <laughs> yeah, apparently. But you know, when I when you sit, you, when you play E4 and they reply C5, but you already know that you already know that this game is going to to be at least interesting because nobody plays C5 on their own. Like if you're an amateur, you play H5, and if you know very little chess, you play E5. Then sometimes you still don't know what you're doing. But E4 C5, then you're definitely okay. You know it's called Sicilian. You know how to develop your pieces. Was I the only Sicilian tonight? No. Okay. Uh, there was another knight or. But I played at the bishop g5 line ah. um, on, on like one of the corners. Um, but I sacrificed the piece of my opponent one wrong pretty quickly. The bishop g5 stuff is, is interesting. It, it's very fashionable. Yes. It's, yes, it's, yes. Yeah, it's, it's the height <laughs> of fashion right now. <laughs> that pretty much sums up my experience with chess. Just really. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> It's a it's a tough game. What can I say? Yeah, you, it, it gives you a lot of tough losses. And a lot. <laughs> yeah, especially when you have like one move that it's like oh yeah, it changes the evaluation. It was funny. Like our game, I just completely Rook G1. He, he checks me, in, and that's the end of it. I just yeah. stopped thinking after that. I was like, <laughs> I saw like the, the Rook H2 sack. I was like, oh yeah, I can just fork and get it back. And then right. it's like Rook G1 check. Oh no, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was kind of a funny position because, I mean, the thing about that end game is that you lose it eventually. It could, it's hard practically to play it, because I can just keep trying forever. And well, the pawns are just weird. Your so. pawns are, well, your king's just weak, and my, mine's not. Yeah. So, as long as I can somehow defend C2, I can keep probing, and mm -hmm. then eventually, eventually black falters. Yeah, he plays king f6. King, king, yeah, king f6, and then, okay, everything kind of collapses. Yeah. That's fun, though. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, there were a lot of interesting games. So what was your record tonight? Was it 28 or 29 in all? Or yeah, however many played in zero. I think it was 29 zero. players? It was 28. I count 28. 28, yeah. 28, yeah. That's, that's right. Good showing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very happy that we got 28 people here. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. No, thank you.